everyone, so welcome to my dad's woodyard and I will probably give you a tour at some time but today he's showing me how to make a gate so keep on watching if you want to learn how to make it. So I need to briefly take you back to my house for a minute because my dad asked me to get three measurements and that was the width of the top, middle and bottom of where the gate was going to go. And luckily mine were all the same and the plan is to fit it to a concrete post and my house wall. And once I'd taken those measurements to my dad's wood yard, he then cut some spars for me because it's going to be a Z frame gate. And to get the measurements for my spars, he took the whole gate, reduced the side posts off that are going to be fixed to my house and my fence and then knocked off a few mil for some clearance and then divided that in half. And that's because I was making some double gates. So then I got designated to this table which was extremely useful than decking at home. And he told me to evenly space out the spars on the table and make sure everything was squared up and then just fix to the table temporarily with some nails and it would just stop any movement later on. And this table was the perfect template because everything was perfect on it. So I hammered in nails on an angle at one end and the others just hammered straight down into it. But not all the way because we want to remove this later. And now it was time to mark out my braces. So I evenly laid a whole piece on top on an angle and held a long piece in line with a middle brace and using the edge of a pencil to make sure it was definitely in line and sometimes a wooden block and marked out where the brace lied to keep it in line later and marked with a pen where I needed to cut them to sit inside. So I had my first piece cut for me with a cross saw. Basically these saws used to be taller than me and I've grown up with them so I've always been told to stay away. So when it was my turn it felt like I wasn't a little kid anymore, it was so surreal. So once all my pieces were cut, I used a long straight edge again to sit on top of the lines that I'd drawn earlier and that way I knew exactly where my braces needed to go. And then I needed to glue the cuts, although here's my dad saying I'm using far too much, and pop the excess on the other side. And then line them up and then really struggle to nail them in with a ring shank nail gun, so my dad had to take over this. But I'll get to use a different one later. But the nails were there just to hold it in place before I screwed them in together because screws are stronger than nails. And once the structure of it was done, I had to make sure there were no nails protruding. So my dad advised me to hammer in some little blocks to trap them in place, and then I could remove the nails. I need to make some notes just so I remember but we're going to do a best side down and mirror this exact door because this is one door and um, yeah <laughs> so something I didn't realise while I was doing YouTube research on making a gate is that the bottom brace always needs to face towards a wall never inwards and apparently this way it evenly distributes the weight so the first one I finish sits on the left hand side while I'm looking at it and once I've got that finished my dad's woodyard trick is to mirror it and that's why the best sides were facing down. So I lined all my three braces on top, made them all flush and then hammered them into the lower one to keep them in place as well. That's not going anywhere. And this was a really useful method and I'm not even sure I would have thought about it. But then I had to make sure the braces were sat on the opposite side. So using a scrap piece of wood I marked out where the bottom brace lied and copied that onto the opposite. Right, okay, so there to there. And did that for the top side as well. So it is there. And copied the exact same technique by using a straight edge to mark where it needed to go. And obviously mark out where I needed to cut them down. But it was more useful being able to reach underneath. <laughs> So once they were cut, I made sure they were in line, but propped them up using offcuts of the same thickness. And then glued and screwed them in. Then for the face of the gate, we used some matchings or matchboard. I heard it called totally different things that day, but to me it looked like tongue and groove, but apparently it's not. And the wood was so long, I needed to roughly cut it in half. And I rather like the system my dad set up, where he'd marked out where halfway was, and just use like a stopping block to clamp it in place on this extended piece of wood that was flush with a cross cut saw. So I didn't even have to think about measurements, just focused on safely cutting it all up. 
but for the first piece of wood it needed to have a smooth edge and with some guidance I used this table saw which was the daddy of all saws I was totally scared of as a kid and trimmed off any grooves to make sure it was smooth for my first piece and while we were here we did that twice for both doors and then I fixed this piece of wood at the end of the table and this was to make sure the bottom of my gate was all even and I learnt that either side of the doors have to have the most glue on them but less as you glue them while you're going along so I lined that piece up and my dad nailed the first one in but then he found this other one that I definitely could use I don't know what was wrong with the trigger on the other one it was just too tough for me and while I was gluing all of the braces and the spars I slotted each plank in and nailed them as I went along but something I forgot to do while I was doing the first door was to nail the braces as I went along so make sure you do that because it makes it a little bit difficult later but you can do it so I learnt that for my second one so I'm now putting a bit more glue on the ends and now measuring how much I had left on the top and the bottom spar and it was about two mil out so my dad just said to push in the bottom one as tight as I could and nail it down because that was a slightly wider area and re-measure that again and then pull out the top one slightly to make sure it's in line with that bottom one and nail it in so because my last piece overlaps with the spar I'm marking out where it lied so I know where to cut for my last piece but somebody else cut that piece for me and then I nailed it down so once that was done I did exactly the same with the bottom one but bear in mind the starting piece had to be on the opposite side and that left me obviously with a little piece facing me right now and I just went over either side of the sharp edges with some sandpaper so it would be softer to touch while I open the gates Done. so now we're at a point where the gates are too tall at the minute so we're now marking out the height of where my gate needs to be but instead of a square top my dad showed me how to do a curved one and he hammered in a first nail where the height of it was going to start and then a top nail at the highest point and then worked out a nice curve and hammered some nails to keep it in place and then I drew around that and then pulled out the nails and then I just cut along my line with a handsaw so we're now flipping it over on top making sure it's all in line and to mirror it just drew along the top and cut again and now I'm holding a piece of wood from the top to the bottom of it and this was to create a stopper for when the gates closed so I marked the height of that and cut that as well but I'll add that on once the gate is finished then we needed to consider if it rained and the tops of my gates are very flat from where I'd cut it using a handsaw so I went over a couple of times either side of the tops just to give it a curved edge so any rain would just run straight off and then the final thing that I needed to add which these just came out of nowhere but he gave me two pieces of wood that went on the inside of the gate and this would be for any bolts to stick into the ground so I glued those, popped them on, made sure they're in line and clamped them down and then flipped them over and screwed those two blocks down into place and repeated that for the other door as well so fitting the gate is going to be a bit tricky for me because I'm learning something completely new by fixing it into a concrete post so sadly I'm going to have to pop that in a part 2 video so don't forget to give it a like and subscribe if you want to stay tuned for next week's video and hopefully I'll see you in my next one. Thanks for watching. Bye! Look who's coming down the yard.